Hey everybody, this is the first video that I'm going to post up on my YouTube channel with my new tank. So, yeah, you might be looking at this and thinking, what the heck? I thought he was a no-sump reefer. Well, that was true. But, uh, like most things, things change. And so, um, basically, I decided to upgrade the space a little bit, size-wise. It's not significantly bigger. It looks bigger, but um, mostly just swapped out the vertical height for the um, horizontal width of the tank. The, um, the, the basic deal here is this is a um, 20 gallon sump with a 70 gallon ocean view tank. Um, clearly I have more space for my lighting now since I already was using uh, a whole bunch of light for a little 65 gallon tank. So, um, I'll give a little more info here in a sec, but let's just watch. Okay, so, um, yeah, there's a external overflow up here, which I had just left up by accident. And then, uh, currently, let's see, I'm in the process of adjusting my dosing, trying to figure that out. Um, calcium levels were real high after the tank transfer, and my alkalinity was also very high. We're talking, it got up to like 40 in the temporary tank. And the calcium, uh, well, first off, the alkalinity is now down in like 7, 8. Uh, but I stopped my dosing to get the calcium down because it was at like 580. So it's a kind of a balance there. I've just been hitting it with alkalinity directly with no calcium the last two days. As the calcium comes down, the alkalinity I can keep stable and seem to be getting on the right track here. Um, I have a bit of a vermited snail infestation, which I've had for a long time. Uh, last night I decided to go through and lift up some of those zoa rocks and glue the um, vermitids shut. That actually helps a lot if you're ever battling zoas closing up. Look for those little tubes, hit them with a tab, just a little dab of um, super glue. You know, make sure that it sets over the hole, and you'll notice like the um, these orange uh, what are they um, Vegas strip zoas? They were, none of them were out yesterday. So just doing that made the whole colony open back up almost all the way. Now the VDMs are still mad for the same reason, I think. So I'm hoping I don't lose them. But the other thing is these Yodas, you know, those were down on that rock. They were closed up almost completely. I sealed up one vermited. And look at them today. Um, the Stony, the SPS, they're doing pretty good. Um, you can see some polyp extension on these guys, so I think I'm okay, but you never know. I've had some wild swings, so it could change. Um, so again, I got two XR15 G4 Pros. I got one XR30 G4 Pro. All of them are running on the Mobius app. And then as far as the, um, the sump, so again, no more no sump briefing. Um, you'll see here that it's jam-packed and down here I'm running 20 gallon sump uh, my two-part doser didn't even have room for it so I had to concoct a, almost like a tray over top this skimmer is amazing on day one no break-in period um, just pure skim um, let's see ATO uh, doser, again, out of room. <laughs> out of room for a lot. So I see why people get big tanks, big stands. 
I got a lot going on in here. Two energy bars, an FMM module, a trident. And the brain of the Apex is back there. Got this little plastic container to catch the wastewater from the trident. But right now the trident is not working. So I'm going to have a ticket open with uh, Neptune on that. But basically the gist of that is the... Um, the calcium levels either show at like 200 or 700 and I've tested with my um, Hannah and, and they are high 580 but that kind of bouncing back and forth is a sign that your trident is not working right luckily the alkalinity is working so I can at least rely on that um, anyways um, and in this sump this is all it's not like uh, PVC or anything tubing is just like that flexible tubing um, I got a vector pump so there's two uh, I'm an mp40 and a vectra um, that I control through Mobius and then I have one of those wave um, apex or is it Neptune yeah Neptune wave pumps in the back so it's the only thing in the tank with a wire so I don't know if that's going to stick around. It doesn't really bother me. Um, but yeah, all in all, things are really do doing pretty good. Um, it fits the space really well. You know, it comes right to the edge just like it was meant to be in this room. Sounds like the ATO is kicking on. So let's go in uh, a little closer here. Yeah, I don't really have anything really dying. Everything looks pretty happy. Polyp extension's good, fish are happy. Uh, this, again, when you're in the reefing hobby, you know this could change overnight. And I'll tell you one thing I'm worried about. The strawberry shortcakes, for me, they're the most finicky. And they can really, um, they can you know, overnight pretty much just completely bleach out. So I would be distraught if I lost that. So I sure hope I don't. You can see the um, orange oxide zoas are just going nuts in there. They have been even in my old tank. Uh, almost lost this SPS in the tank transfer. It was almost bleached out completely, but it's recovering. So I'm happy about that. And other than that, just trying to get some of these zoas to pop back to life. Actually, they're looking better today than they were even yesterday. Let's see if I can get a better view on those. No, nah, probably not. Kind of a weird angle on the tank. So yeah, just growing out some things, trying to get some color back in these frags. Um, those AOIs have had the fermented issue too. So again, if you learned anything from this video, maybe it's just to consider vermitids um, as the source of your zoas being not opening. I have had success in the past with bumblebee snails for that. So that's going to be the next thing that I do is probably buy like 50 bumblebee snails. Um, if you want happy, healthy zoas, not a bad idea um, to have those critters on hand. So that's it for tonight. Um, I don't really typically pop on here too much my face, but it's um, been a while, so yeah, that's, uh, I'm very happy with this tank. Um, I, I don't know how many updates I'll need to do, aside from, you know, something maybe goes wrong, something um, really goes right, but I'll try to do some semi-regular updates on this. Um, sorry, I was looking at one of my hammer corals, but... Thought I saw bleaching, but it's actually growth, so that's always a good thing. You can see underneath there that white up at the top. I thought when I, mean, I saw that from the side, it looked like it was bleached out, but nope, that's a good thing on a hammer. So, yeah, leave any comments, um, questions about anything I'm learning. Um, I personally think that it was good to learn without a sump. I feel like I learned a lot, but I did not learn, you know, all the plumbing stuff. And 
it's different. I mean, there's things you have to be careful of. Um, you know, keeping your uh, return relatively high up in the tank like that. Um, the reason being if the power goes out, the siphon starts, and it'll siphon down to that uh, return. So basically anything below, or anything above the bottom of it has to go down into the sump. Um, so if you accidentally leave it pointing straight down, it's going to have to, you know, it's going to drain that much, 70 gallons into your, onto your floor, because it's going to overfill your sump. So I've always been hesitant of using a sump for things like that, but, um, Ultimately, I think it, it's probably better. I think I'll actually spill less things over time, or at least that's my hope. Um, but we'll find out. Um, what brought this all on is we got new carpet in this place. So if you could imagine me trying to, I had to remove the old tank, um, clean out the, the whole house, get this new carpet put down, and then, um, had this actually delivered and set up by a uh, local aquarium shop by the name of Matt's Corals. They're in Gahanna, Ohio. Highly recommend go check out that store if you were ever in Columbus because Columbus seems to be a place where stores like to take advantage of people and they don't have enough competition. And the other stores in town, I don't want to knock them by name, but they don't really take care of their tanks. So it was a no-brainer to me to go to the place that did for the new tank, especially the install. And you can trust Matt at that at that place. He's a good guy, and his team is good too. So um, that's pretty much it for now. Expense-wise, just so you're kind of thinking, I think I got the tank for... I want to say fourteen hundred. Um, that included the stand, that included the sump, the um, the plumbing. Did not include the Vectra. Did not include any of the other equipment that I had already, and it did not include the um, skimmer. So I did have to buy a new skimmer, and I did have to buy the Vectra return pump, of course. But ultimately, I'm hoping that I can recoup some of these losses, you know, in uh, rehoming. Uh, there's a lot of that that we do in, in Columbus through Facebook, which is nice. Um, it kind of pays for itself over time if you do it right. So, yeah, that's it. Um, we'll rename the channel because I obviously can't keep no sum briefing. Um, but it, try to think of something creative and uh, kind of fun. So, again, just... Um, I'll end with a kind of a pan out here on the table.